Ähm, ja, sind sie. Also ich bitte jetzt um möglichst kurze Mord Wortmeldungen, damit auch alle Rednerinnen hier noch mal zu Wort kommen. Mhm. Okay. Mhm. Uh, I'll be very, I'll try and be very brief on a very big subject here. Yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to, I was very concerned about the comparison of Ochalan and Gandhi. And I think we need to be a little careful when we make these comparisons because, uh, first of all, we need to take into account the historical context within which the two persons were operating. And also, I think when we make these comparisons, it is important to make a difference between the spoken word and the actions of the men in concern. Now, I want to just flag this, that Gandhi was a conservator. He was a conservative politician. He came from a conservative ideology. <laughs> but given, and also, I, yesterday I mentioned the Gadhar movement. Gadhar, as I, the word itself means revolt. And Gandhi came in Gandhi was the British response to the Gadar movement. So one has to keep that context in mind. But I want to just be very brief and point out three, highlight three important differences between Ochalan and Gandhi. First of all, Gandhi, being a conservative, was very much against uh, was, uh, his, women, his ideology on women was fundamentally different from genealogy. Gandhi, in fact, believed in the pr principle of Purushartha. Purushartha in Hindu philosophy is the primacy of the male principle. Not just the men, but the male principle of life. Yeah? And this is not only, you know, it's a certain branch of Hinduism, because in many parts of India, the many branches of Hinduism still believe, even today, on the primacy of the female principle or the feminine principle. So even within the Indian Hindu context, he came from a particularly conservative uh, interpretation of Hinduism. I'm not even going into Marxism, nationalism, and all those things again. <laughs> yeah? so, the second big difference is the principle of self-defense. Gandhi never affirmed the principle of self-defense. On the contrary, being a conservative, his principle was that the, those in higher positions in society, for example, the landlords, the industrialists, they should have a, a kind of paternalistic interest in the lower class, lower caste women, and look after them. So it was a very paternalistic principle where, which said that the upper castes, the upper class should be kind and nice to the people below. Which is, I think, if I have understood anything of Ochalan in the last three, three days, it is completely different to the principle of self-defense. Okay? And the third principle... The third principle, if I have understood Ochalan at all in this last three days and learned anything at all from being here, if I have not learned it, it would be a very sad waste of three days here. But I think that Ochalan's <laughs> idea of a free Kurdistan or indeed a free, any society, a free society is one that is internally equal. Yeah, that is where people, that is equality and uh, uh, humanity within that society. Yeah. Gandhi actually affirmed the institutions of feudalism in a way I don't think Ochalan does. So I think that that's, those are some very fundamental principles and we need to actually be aware of those things. Lastly, I think therefore we come to the question of village republics. What do we make of Gandhi's concept of village republics? Yesterday in my interventions or talk or somewhere, I think I mentioned about how when I was talking about responding to democratic confederalism, how the idea of village republics 
is integral to Indian civilization. In the pre-colonial India, we were organized as village republics. And, and therefore for us, and that is why I said democratic confederalism for us is a natural concept. Because that is how we were before the British came and, and removed that. But then the imperialists can't just throw out structures that have been there for millions of years. So in spite of 250 years of British rule, the idea of village republic still remains and still remains. If you go to rural India today, that is how people's mentality is. They think in terms of village republics. And Gandhi being a conservative, the Gadhar movement argued that we should be a federation of qoms. Qom is kind of a nation, people, I don't know, it, there, there's no English equivalent word for that. We say Vatan and Qom. These are two very central words in, in our language. And so the Gadar movement said that India should be a federation of many Qoms who live in this Vatan we call Hindustan. That was their concept of Azad Hindustan. Now Gandhi in fact takes the village republic idea and he says, but the internal structure will remain the traditional feudal structure. Yeah? And this was a fundamental difference between Gandhi's self-republic and the Gadar movement's self-republic uh, and self-governing republics. So the Gadar movement actually said the women's situation in, the, in India should change. And this was 100 years ago, that therefore in the Azad Hindustan, the uh, women's position will be different in the various combs. And they said every comb has to take a responsibility for making sure that there are changes within their own qoms. That was humanistic, that respected women, and that, that brought in equality. So I think that, that those are kind of fundamental difference. I just want to, before I know, I'm very conscious that there are other, but I thought this was an important point, um, that the question of Swaraj and Swadeshi and Satyagraha. So both the concept of Swaraj and Swadeshi. Swaraj meaning self-governance, and Swadeshi meaning self economics, yeah, economic autonomy and political autonomy. Both of those concepts came from the Gadar movement. Yeah, and it was the Gadar movement that actually advocated both of these things. Gandhi combined the non-violence with the Swadeshi and Swaraj principle and because he was actually responding to the Gadar movement, they, he actually had to adopt both of those slogans as part of his thing. To conclude, I don't think that Gandhi ever was against the state as a principle, not least because he wrote the book in 1909 in response to the Gadar movement on the uh, called Hind Swaraj, where he develops his theoretical ideas about uh, you know state and all those. And there he does say all these things which he has taken from the movements that were there in opposition to him. However, he was the chief negotiator of the freedom movement in that, with the British. And so the architect of the state that we have in India today, he was the chief negotiator of that state. Now we can say, of course, as a chief negotiator does not have free uh, movement or has got limitations or whatever. But let's not forget, he negotiated the state that we have inherited today. And one of the big problems with the, the reason why it fell apart, and Gandhi himself was assassinated in the end, was because the British, in response to the Gadar movement, they started negotiating with two branches of Indian society. One they called the landlords and merchants, and the other they called, quote unquote, educated classes. So what happens after the independence is that the landlords and merchants and the educated classes have a very different vision of modern India because Gandhi was against modernity because he was feudal and the educated classes were very much in the favor of a modern India. Kada, sorry, but we have so very few times. I'll just stop there. I just thought I had to say this because uh, we also in India are trying to develop solidarity for the Kurdish movements. And I think if we start saying Ochalan and Gandhi are the same, we are going to have a lot of problem in our work. So, so. Hello?
Ähm, ja, ich äh, spreche auf Deutsch und meine Frage geht an den Arno. Und zwar geht es um die Akademien, die es in Kurdistan überall gibt. Einfach die Frage, ähm, wie die funktionieren und wer darauf Zugriff hat, also wer da hingehen kann. Kann man da einfach hingehen, wenn man will? Wir sammeln ein paar Fragen. Äh, wir sammeln ein paar Fragen. Okay. Ähm. Also ich wollte eher eine Frage an, nicht ans Podium stellen, sondern eine offene Frage reinwerfen. Ich glaube, das macht nicht so Sinn, wenn wir jetzt sammeln. Für. Also. Sonst, oder, okay, also ich rede in Deutsch. Ähm, ich wollte noch mal ähm, sagen, wir haben ja viel erfahren hier, vor allem was Organisierung von Kollektivität jenseits von Staat, von Nation, von ähm, Familie angeht in Kurdistan. Und ich glaube, für diejenigen von uns, die hier in den kapitalistischen Zentren leben, dass die Frage hier sich viel dringlicher stellt, auch weil ich, das ist meine Meinung, das Gefühl habe, dass es hier kaum Gemeinschaft gibt, unabhängig vom Staat. Und dass ich eine Frage, mit der ich hier reingekommen bin, sehr bereichert, aber auch wieder damit rausgehe, ist die Frage, wie eine linke Bewegung hier diese Räume schaffen kann, also diese Momente von Kollektivität oder von Gemeinschaft ähm, in dieser Gesellschaft hier, wo der Staat so tief verinnerlicht ist und so wenig Gemeinschaft da ist, wie man das ähm, aufbauen kann und aber auch für die Bewegung selber, für uns, wie wir, eine, also was wir auch lernen können vielleicht von der kurdischen Bewegung, dass die linke Bewegung sich hier wieder mehr als Kollektiv, als Gemeinschaft organisiert und ähm, in, vor dem Hintergrund fand ich den Vortrag aus Montreal total spannend und würde gerne wissen, ähm, was so die Momente waren oder die Themen, die so eine breite ähm, Bevölkerung dazu gebracht haben, sich überhaupt selbst zu organisieren, weil ich das hier als sehr schwierig empfinde. Und ich als Abschluss, ich würde mir wünschen, dass diese, diese breite Vielfalt ähm, von Leuten hier, dass wir in Diskussion bleiben und die Ergebnisse von der Konferenz in die Bewegung wieder zurücktragen und auch Räume schaffen, wo wir genau die Frage, wie nämlich der Kampf hier auch geführt werden kann und was wir von Rojava für hier lernen können, dass wir dafür irgendwie Räume schaffen in Zukunft. Ja, wir geben jetzt erstmal wieder an die Referentin. Die erste Frage war zu den Akademien. Da wird Herr Wall, äh, Mustafa was zu sagen. Na, na, Rojava Kurdistan, System Akademie hat die Chegren. Auch die Perwarda Krina, Jani, Jivakeda, Chalube. Als Bordekam Pers, Chawa Karbe, Harkasek, Sarbest Ware, Jan Sarbest Nei, Dui Hawi, der hat Perskrim. Harkasi, der Hase, der Basiru Java, Kurstam, der hat ein Tikili Haven, der in Standen, der Wiwe Haven, der hat ein Jama Nari, der Bridge Haven, der Akademie, der Wiwe, der Harkaskane, Seriluan Bede, noch Taiwan, Assas Begre, Udurdaji, Gabe Babije. يعني أو أكاديميات يادي تشيكرن ربشين موجود جور بجور إجنان جوانان كي كيجان صاد إنساني سريل كيجان بشي بده لكيجان خباطية بده حر كثيرة ببريك بيها يا تجاري بمري سريل سريل دانة بكي نكانة لكسي بجرة أز باردكم دواء أستيدا حر كسر كانة سريل بشي كو بيوستا فيرا تكلي تشيكل وي بده يعني Kommen first us auf einem Kurve, es kann bewegt Kurtai, Wani, Berswe, bitte. Spass. Da war eine Frage zur Organisierung der Linken. Der Arno würde was dazu sagen. Ja, ich würde auch noch gerne was zu den Akademien sagen. Und zwar dürfen wir die Akademien halt nicht nur als Räume, als äh, Häuser verstehen, als Struktur, sondern ähm, vor allem auch als Freiräume, als Räume, wo Begegnung, wo Bildung, wo Austausch, wo Lernen stattfinden kann. Ähm, zum Beispiel in Kurdistan gibt es natürlich die Räume, die überall aufgebaut werden, wo Wissen vermittelt wird, wo äh, Wissen sich angeeignet wird. Das passiert in Rojava natürlich gerade ganz akut, weil man dieses, diese Freiräume, die einfach entstanden sind, nutzen kann. In Nordkurdistan werden auch in allen Städten Akademien aufgebaut. Die sind dann zum Beispiel an die politische Partei 
WebAP angelehnt. Das ist rechtlich in der Türkei so vorgeschrieben, dass diese Institutionen ähm, irgendwie institutionell angebunden sein müssen. Aber diese Freiräume entstehen überall. Also zum Beispiel auch die Berge Kurdistans. Ne? Die Guerilla ist nicht nur eine militärische Kraft, sondern vor allem auch eine ideologische Kraft, wo einfach Bildung stattfindet, wo Generationen von Jugendlichen hingehen, um sich zu bilden, um gebildet zu werden und äh, eine neue Bewegung aufzubauen. Und äh, das passiert überall. Also auch äh, in ganz Kurdistan, in Europa, kommen Leute zusammen, bilden sich für zwei, drei Wochen und das ist dann ein Raum für Akademie. Und ich glaube, das ist auch was, was die deutsche Linke sich nochmal bewusst machen muss, dass diese Freiräume, die erkämpft wurden, linke Zentren, unabhängige Jugendzentren, die in den 80er Jahren entstanden sind, aus Besetzung heraus vorgegangen sind, dass das Räume sind, die wir uns auch selbst wieder aneignen müssen. Das sind teilweise Räume, in die man sich nicht mehr begeben möchte, weil sie so ranzig sind. So. Da finden äh, im besten Sinne noch regelmäßig Kulturveranstaltungen, vielleicht Diskussionen statt, aber es sind keine Räume mehr des gemeinsamen Begegnens und der Bildung. Und ich glaube, das ist was, worauf wir aufbauen können und wo wir auch wieder anknüpfen können. Und das vergessen wir mal gerne, dass wir hier auch schon äh, vieles haben, auf dem wir, wo wir weitermachen können. Und das ist, glaube ich, dann auch nochmal ein Appell ähm, auf die Frage, was, was können wir hier tun. Die kurdische Bewegung ist eine Bildungsbewegung. Also jeder, der sich innerhalb der Strukturen der kurdischen Bewegung bewegt, kriegt regelmäßig Bildung, ob er will oder nicht, und muss sich halt auch äh, mit sich selbst weiterentwickeln. Und das ist auch das, ähm, was eingeleitet wurde mit Theorie und Praxis. Das kann man nicht voneinander trennen, das gehört zusammen. Und da muss auch die deutsche Linke oder eine europäische Linke halt ihre ihre Haltung zu Bildung äh, überdenken, also dass man nicht entweder in eine reine Theoriearbeit verfällt oder in so eine Theoriefeindlichkeit, sondern dass man es miteinander verbindet und so verständlich macht, dass auch jeder daran teilhaben kann. Ja, vielen Dank. Hier vorne geht es jetzt weiter mit den Fragen. Danach der Herr hier mit dem orangen Pullover und dann... Äh, und, ja, okay. Hier. Und erstmal möchte vielleicht der Joam noch mal was sagen. Okay. Okay. Um, I think it's obvious that uh, in, in India Gandhi is as admired as, as hated, I guess, by, by many. Uh, for those of us from other parts of the world, I think when we, you know, when we use... Uh, the ideas that others have done in the past, be, you know, being medieval uh, peasant revolutions, being 19th century revolutionaries, being Gandhi in India, other thinkers around the world, or Ocalan today, I think we were able to uh, take the best of what is useful for us in terms of building our own movements in our own uh, homelands and uh, whatever can be useful and in terms of also learning from past experiences I think it, it's good to reflect. I'm not trying to equate by no means the thinking of, of Gandhi and Ocalan. Um, uh, of course Gandhi has around a hundred volumes of work and in, in many cases uh, contradictory in itself. Also Ocalan's work for uh, writings in, in all these decades are sometimes contradictory because ideas change and, and move um, so by no means I'm trying to to equate both figures or both uh, movements but either but rather trying to see how we can learn from past experiences I think the Indian freedom movement uh, in larger terms was a good example of how uh, a way of thinking in which uh, the state power um, relies on our compliance and civil resistance is basically uh, a, a struggle in which uh, our way of, 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 um, of self-defense is, uh, is taking out that compliance with the state and uh, basically to also create a different society which, not, which is not based on that state paradigm. Um, in any case, um, yeah, I just wanted to make that, that note and we can certainly maybe have other discussions later. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay, ich hatte hier noch äh, leider eine Frage überhört, die ging an äh, Dimitri. Äh, das war die Frage, ähm, was waren die ersten Motive, die die Leute bewegt haben, sich zu organisieren? I heard the comment, but I don't think it was addressed to anybody on the panel and not to me. 
this, the person who made the state, I'm not, I'm not addressing the question to the panel. I'm addressing the question to all of us. And she used the example of Montreal. So I'm not going to answer the question since it was not addressed either to the panel or to me. However, I am prepared to discuss it after the panel and this question period is over. Okay, then it's now with the questions here front. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you very much for a, a fascinating panel. Uh, particularly, I'm very happy to hear an African perspective, because too frequently when we talk from, uh, from an international perspective, African voices are missing, African perspectives are missing, and the struggle for self-determination, the struggle uh, against colonialism and the like, we have so much to learn from African perspectives. Uh, and uh, so I, I address my first question to Alex, who I very much appreciated uh, uh, your contribution. Uh, so this comparison between Ojalan and Mandela and the legacy of Mandela, could you say, uh, could, you, could you give us a uh, 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 your thoughts about this comparison and the legacy of Mandela in the struggles uh, that are still uh, uh, ahead, of, ahead, uh, ahead of the liberation movement uh, in uh, South Africa in particular. And then I have a question actually for you, Demetrius, uh, uh, which is uh, the second question, which is uh, given the fact that uh, we're here uh, th talking about international struggles but with a particular Kurdish focus, uh, uh, it struck me, uh, uh, just, uh, just a point of curiosity, what is the relationship between the student movement, these popular mobilizations, and Quebecois nationalism? No, please, Alex, answer to these questions. Yeah, quite a difficult question. I must say that uh, having been here in the past uh, three days and of course having interacted with some literature to some extent about Orchelan, I must say that there are similarities but as well as differences. Remember when we talk about Nelson Mandela, we talk about the man who was the first commander in chief of what we call the People's Liberation Army, Umkondo Wesizwe, which was established in 1961 to take up arms to overthrow the state and to defend the people. And here, listening quite carefully, uh, since uh, the first day we started, uh, I have had ideas about uh, uh, self-defense. Uh, uh, under the leadership of the African National Congress and the Communist Party, and of course Mandela, we established what we called self-defense units ourselves. But, uh, you know, different settings and contexts sometimes, in fact, if not most of the time, require, you know, different tactics to navigate, even if we are advancing to a similar goal. Uh, which is why in the context of South Africa and under the leadership of Mandela, uh, our program is a program to build what we characterized or what we called the National Democratic Society. And when I'm listening to the ideas of Orchelan, they are speaking about a democratic nation. So. Uh, which is why I said uh, perhaps there is a need for us to agree on our definition of what we refer to as a democratic nation. Earlier on I spoke about uh, the Freedom Charter and highlighted some of its key economic principles. At the center of those principles is the idea of building what we call a national democratic economy. And the South African Communist Party believes that the achievement of the goals of the Freedom Charter will lay the indispensable basis for the advance to socialism. And it is through that transition that we will, uh, at its fullest, eliminate the state from a Marxist-Leninist point of view. But when we come to Orchelan, 
we begin to see experiments, of course, influenced by the historical context of the Kurdish people and uh, strategies to construct experiments and alternatives in the concrete conditions which uh, uh, the Kurdish people are faced with. Uh, the legacy of Mandela in conclusion, uh, look, Mandela was arrested in the 1960s and we fought for his uh, release from prison which we achieved in 1990 and after his release we achieved uh, a democratic breakthrough, not freedom, we don't characterize it as freedom. It was only a democratic free, uh, breakthrough for us to continue the struggle towards the achievement of freedom. He only served uh, uh, f uh, only one term of office for five years from 1994 to 1999. And unfortunately, it was during uh, his presidency that a neoliberal program, growth, employment, and redistribution was imposed mainly driven by the deep deep president, but Mandela was focusing largely on nation building and on reconciliation to unite the South African society, which is, in my view, very key in the context of the Kurdish people. Unity is very important, but unity cannot only be the unity of the Kurdish people alone. It must be the unity of the Kurdish people and the people in the geography where they are living together to build a democratic society. Dimitri, can you please uh, on the question? To be sure, we will agree that to give a useful answer to your question would take a good bit of time. So I will summarize. Recall that the symbol of the student and youth uprising of 2012, the symbol which continues to be used today, is the red square. It's the red square, felt square, that everybody wore and continues to wear and has become an international symbol. I mean, I remember uh, in September I was at an exhibit at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London on dissidents, and there was a whole section on the student uprising of 2012, and they had the red square all over the place. Now, why am I talking about the red square? Because it's not a blue square. Okay? Blue is the color of the nationalists. Now, there are two kinds of nationalisms in Quebec. And it is a society that is under siege, in a way, uh, by the surrounding English language continent. There are two kinds of nationalism. There is political nationalism, headed by those who want to establish a separate nation state. And there is cultural nationalism those who want to protect the authentic people's culture, the language, and the traditions. All of us, all of us, Francophones and Anglophones, are united on the point of cultural identity, the importance of cultural identity. But one does not necessarily lead to the other. The student movement, for instance, uh, in symbolizing itself with the red square, said exactly that. In the mass demonstrations, there were people from all walks of Quebec society. There was an openness at the college level between the French and English language students, which was rarely seen before. And finally, what is also very interesting, is that, of course, the anarchists, the young anarchists, are very strong. They're very strong in Quebec. They're certainly strong in the streets of these mass demonstrations. And for the first time in the history of Quebec, you have the emergence of an anti-nationalist movement. People who do not trust the nationalist elite and their political and economic ambitions. So 
we're entering into a very interesting phase of contradictions. And this is without historical precedent. And all of that has to be taken into account in order to understand the roots of the revolt. Also es ist jetzt, wir haben jetzt eigentlich schon überzogen, da oben sind noch zwei Mikrofone verteilt worden. Ich bitte jetzt noch zwei kurze Fragen zu stellen und dann dürfen äh, die Referentinnen hier noch, es tut mir leid, es können nicht alle äh, mehr zu Wort kommen. Ähm, die Referentinnen können dann noch ein kurzes Abschlusswort sagen, also bitte jetzt die beiden letzten Fragen. Benim sorum sein Alexe, Güney Afrika da. Mücadele içinde ve mücadelenin sonucunda kadınlar siyasette nasıl yer aldı ve şimdi nasıl yer alıyorlar? Nitel ve nicel olarak. Ee, bir de siz e, 1955 yılında çizilen stratejiden söz ettiniz. Bu maddelerden e, kaçını hayata geçirebildiniz? E, eğer geçiremediyseniz neden? Ve siz işteki sorunların Ee, yani bir e, ülkenin ya da bir e, Güney e, Afrika'nın e, sorunların çözümünde yeterli olmadığını söylediniz. Bir de dışsal sorunlardan söz ettiniz. E, yani Kürdistan'la karşılaştığımız e, karşılaştırdığımızda orada da e, ulusal birliğin önünde engel olan partiler var ve bu çok büyük bir sorun olarak görülüyor. E, her ne kadar e, e, Sayın Öcalan'ın ideolojisine göre tabii ki e, bir, e, her parçada yaşayan Kürdün kendini demokratikleştirirken e, diğer ulusları da demokratikleştirme görevi e, olduğunu e, iddia etmesine rağmen e, bunları karşılaştırdığınızda neler söyleyebilirsiniz? Teşekkür ederim. I, I need the Spanish translation. Habla, hablaré despacio. Eh, mi, mi, mi pregunta es para la ponente que ha hablado sobre el Kurdistán Sur. Eh, como nos ha explicado el patriarcado y el capitalismo... Me, mi, repito, mi pregunta es para la ponente que ha hablado sobre el Kurdistán Sur. Eh, como nos ha explicado, el patriarcado y el capitalismo son problemas profundo en el Kurdistán iraquí, pero el contexto es muy distinto a Rojava o al Kurdistán Norte. Eh, los partidos conservadores tienen todavía un apoyo eh, considerable y recuerdo una entrevista a un miembro del, del PSDK, del Partido por la Solución Democrática, donde explicaba que en el Kurdistán Sur había una relación clientelar entre con los gobernantes y, y, la, y la sociedad. Eh, yo quería preguntar cómo el, el movimiento por el conferismo democrático, el PSDK y, y el TACK, eh, cómo enfocan la lucha por cambiar eh, la sociedad y la mentalidad en el, en el Kurdistán Sur, qué tipo de, de, de actividad y de lucha llevan a cabo. Gracias. Uh, thank you very much for asking the important question of women in South Africa. You know, uh, in the past, before machinery took over agriculture, uh, there were stones used to crush millimil, you know. And there is a say in South Africa that you touch, a, uh, you touch women, you are touching those stones. In other words, you will be crushed. Uh, this came as a result of the important role women played in South Africa. They were the first people to establish mass mobilization against the system of restrictions to mobility or freedom of movement. They were the very first people. So there is a rich history of women struggles and women's organization in South Africa. They challenge the system of oppression. 
and uh, they fought. Of course, they were part of uh, uh, our armed wings uh, uh, in challenging the system. And today, South Africa, particularly the African National Congress, which is leading our alliance, has adopted a 50-50 policy. Okay, what does uh, the policy of 50-50 mean? It means when you contest elections and you draw up a list, for example, of parliamentarians, the list must not have less than 50% women. Okay? When you assemble a cabinet, the ministers must not be less than 50% women or even any significantly lower than that. When you convene a conference like this one, the delegates must not be less than 50% women. When you elect a leading structure, like uh, executive committees, the composition must not be less than 50% women. Okay? But of course, uh, there are weaknesses as well as uh, strengths. Numbers do not necessarily translate into, you know, uh, uh, other things. So this is a process of struggle for change. And uh, why were we not able to realize the vision? You see, many of the rights which our vision document, the Freedom Charter, calls for, have been codified and translated into the current constitution of South Africa and they are part of the supreme law of South Africa. Okay, but in so far as economic transformation and development is concerned, the reason why we were not able to realize those objectives, as I have explained earlier, is that capital, both in South Africa and internationally, is concentrated in very few hands and those few hands are backed up by very powerful nation states, which can impose sanctions, it can trigger capital flight, your currency can be attacked, so many things can happen. So if you don't understand the international character of capitalist exploitation and its support to the existing structure of nation state, you can plunge a nation into crisis. You can plunge society into crisis. As I'm addressing you now today here, Zimbabwe doesn't have its own currency. It has been dollarized. There has been sanctions imposed. And many of, many of the people of the world, this is my experience when I travel throughout the world, formulate perspectives on what they see on television screens what they read in the newspapers. Those things can give you a completely different picture from what obtains on the ground, and you can believe in them. Like, for example, uh, the killing of workers in South Africa in 2012. Many of the people I meet internationally, for them that thing was just about the police. But the role played by the world's largest platina, and plots, the role played by, which is a British uh, listed company, the role played by Lon, Lon, Lon Min, London Minerals, in pitting the workers against one another and ensuring that they kill one another to divide the trade union movement and place the police under pressure to come and stop the killings and the raping of women. None of the people I had uh, interacted with understand this role. So it is very important to understand the external factors which are constitutive and which condition the internal structure of oppression. If you don't appreciate that, you might think that your struggle is only national and by establishing a, a democratic confederalism, for example, at the local level, you have solved the problem. Actually, you might achieve to establish it only to realize that there is a bigger picture which will destroy the very same autonomous and uh, democratic confederal structures on the ground and prohibit them from moving forward.
پرسیاری که هات کردن به گمان آخرین پرزی ده براسی حال دگری کومروف زلال بونه کی بخورابی نه لی از باورم یعنی وقتی وجود جوان که با شوری کردستان جوان که کی محافظ کاره لی چه وای کو پارتیان حتی نه د صلاد دارین او جوان که برای ودبن ده حال بچردنان دا دنگ دستینن راست جبر کو جواب به مکانیزمین کو تیان بر رف برن هاتن مجبور کردن جواب تنی رای کیه یا اوجی او کو بر رای دنگ دانه معاشی وی نیا کت کردن ج تشتین کو دچارچه وی سیستما دولت دا اداری دا جه سود دگری جبو جیان اخوی روژانا جوی بیا پار نمینه مجبور دمینه کو دنگ دان بیگو من ام نکارن تشتی که ایوسا مطلق جی بی بیجن کو ساتی ساد دنگ داین دما حل بجاردنی دا چه دی بیا گل نرازی بو نوان هیا و لگرین اکی وان جی چار سری هیا چه واد دکارن خود تفگر بکن دی چوار چه بیا تیزا کنفیدرالیزم دموکراتیک دا بیگو من اف هولدان نه هولدانی که نویه هندوری ده سالی داوی دا به تایبتی لباشوری کردستان لگرین اکیش بو خود تفگر کرن لچارچوه یا بان تیزین کو برای زوجلان پشکشکریه هیه جبر کو جواق دچارچوه دو تیگین انده ام ببیجن او بیه پریز بویه یک جواق دبنده ده آستا لکال دا جواکی که محافظ کاره نورمن جواکی و اخلاقی رول زده نداشته رولی که پر کلاسیک و زارک چکرین خودی کرین مال دا ماین اگر دما درد که به مینا هر کارکاری که یا هر فرمان بری که درد که به تنیش بوده بارا خوب که نکوچ رولی که جبو گوهرت نا جواکی ببینه دبینه لی دژور دا دا آستا جور دا چینن دا سالات دار کابیتالیسم و نورمن کابیتالیسم سیستم کابیتالیسم وای کی ری کی خلاص بون جوایکی پش پشکشی جوایک دکن اف جوایک دنوا خودا ناکوکیان پر مزن دژی یعنی دو نورمن جدا فکراندن دو نورمن جدا بر رف برن هم دواری سیاسی دا، هم دواری اخلاقی دا، هم دواری آبوری دا. دنبال جواب که عادتا دبل مورال شکریه. یعنی جنی کی دکاری کامپیوتر با کار بینه، دکاری موبایلی بیه، دکاری اینترنت هبه، دکاری بچه ماموسایتی با کار انجی دکتره. لی اود چارچوبی چارچوبی که پر تنگ دا مایه اف. می افزی می نپیش که تن هاتی دیتن شو پرومی اساسی دوی خاله دایه یعنی تشتیان آموری آموریان که هنر تیان بکار آنین افزی وکی پیش که تن تیان دیتن لی دنوا جوای که دا لگوری دانیان که هاتی داین صتی دو دو جن تبلیغ جان اساسی دبن تبلیبونا اندامین پارلمان پارلمان توی باشوری کردستانه با کوتا دشن پارلمانه دما دنگ داینه داشنان هری کم دنگ دستینن با کوتا دکوین پارلمانه دنوا پارلمانه قانونی انتین لدر خستن قانونی انکو نکاری بر سوا دخوازیان جوایک بده آوانه همو به هر را بگمان مثلا پرچوی علاسره کمرف براسیجی به چند دقیان بکار به ایفاده بکه لی هری داوی او کو نه جوایک پروبلمی هن پر مزندجی مثلاً از یک نمونه بدم دواری آبدا مثلاً سالوگر هری داوی آ کم کجی حلبچه ده حلبچه دا باقی که هبو کو پر انسان لد جمل باتاوی وند آکریا گود گوتن یکی پر به معنای گود بنیاری نامن اف گوتن نتنه گوتن نویه ام روزانه دبیستن جوای ک باشوری کل سان گود صدام حسین ما فیزیکی قرکر بدنی ما قرکر لی بسپین سالان دا ام اخلاقی قربون هاتن قرکرن یعنی او گوتن پر گوتنه کی به معنای جبر کو مورال جواکه د معنای خو بر رو بر نه دا بر هم چکر نه دا دموکراسی علی تبلیبونا جیانا سیاسی جیانا ابوری جواکی هاتنه تو نکرن 
یعنی جواکی که تنه لسر اساسی برخوری او دبه نها اگر کسیان بچن باشوری کردستانی او بکن یک جه نورمین کپیتالیزم یک دنها و جواکی در او دکا کرینه بازار هر زیاده تو تشتان بکری حوجه جینه به تو بکری او هر زیاده نها سردست لباشوری کردستان او سایکولوژی او آلین درونی هر زیاده سردست ها در مالباته که در او هفته چند تشتین نب هیچ نپیدویه جی پیدوی مالباته نینه لیده کره چما او یک جی تشتین سیستم کپیتالیزم تأثیر خو کریه پیشکشی جواکی کریه چما جبر لسر ریا میدیا عادت بومباردومانه که لسر جواکی جواک بوی فرد بی هند بی او او که جانه که راز دبینه شخو ناکوکین هری مزن لبه درده درده که بی در نوبری نورمن جواکی یکو بری در بن ذهنیت انسان اندامایه و تشتین کپیتالیزم پیشکش دکا انسان در خانه و روشه که کو پر آلوزی بخورا بجی یعنی در کسایتی آویده در حتی در آخافت ناویده در لخوکرین آویده هر تشتی که ویده ناکوکی دجی جبر بی ری که خلاص بون نها لی گرینه کی من از دوباره دکم بیگوتنی لی ری کی خلاص بون دخوازه ببینه نها سمتی کی پر مزن نه و جوایک دب راستی جی چه بی راسته دبی کو شری لهم بری داعشی وی هن زده تر جوایک تشویقی لی گرینه کی نوکریه جبر کو عالی خو پرستن یه داز یه دا سیستم ما پرستن یه باشوری کردستان نبود برسف ملا بویرا هولی را دادید ملا موسل را دادید ملا لشنگال را داویدید لشاری دمین داوی یه لباشوری کردستان در امده بینید جبر بی نتنی واری خو پرستن در پر آلی دن دا نها جواک در لگرین که دایا رخنا پر هنه دنها و جواک دا در بیکو جیهان ناو نتوی پر زیده وی نبیسته و نکوی روشوا ناو نتوی او جی با خوب پروبلمه که مزنه بنیرین همین جبر کو میدیا دما در چین باشوری کردستانی هری زیده تیکالی تنه با رایدارین باشوری کردستان و با پارتین با در سالاداری دانا چه دکن جواکی دا دوی گوداری جواکی وره کرن جبایی کو راستی جی پروبلم چیه لیوی دری باش وره ناس کرن و سیستم کپیتالیزم چ خراب لج واقعی کریا باش واری دیتن از خازم جبو برسی وی برسی و سابج. Ja, wir sind jetzt am Ende angekommen. Noch mal an die Referenten. Habt ihr noch ein Schlusswort? Wollt ihr noch kurz was sagen? Herr Wal Mustafa, der Chosi, da wir jetzt nicht dabei sind. بکن داویدا سپاسیه وقت کن ام دخوازن بالی و بکشین سر و ران کردن و خراب کردن بازار کوبان ابتدایی بیتر اف کفرانسا دواری نقاشات دادو ام دخوازن دواری پراتیکی ده هدیت ناندا جبو نو آوا کردن کوبانی هیویا مه هرکس کار به گری لیاقی و بر خدانی هاتی کردن لهم بر ترور که هری مزن قاسی در فت و امکان هنچی آلیکاری به کوبان روار کردن لحمو بشان لبشی زان یعنی زانیاری لبشی پرفیسونالی لبشی کار بن خدم چاو فیری خدمت ام ببن جبر ام به حاجتی حمو واتشتانه داوید از سرکفت نجبار دخوازن دخواتی و دا گلکس پاست کن که امهات انتباه سلام رزی مجبور Yes, very briefly. So just two final comments that I didn't actually say before. One is that we have to be very cautious in terms, uh, also from what we heard from South Kurdistan, on how formal political independence or autonomy within the nation state framework, how is that a threat to the development of the revolution uh, uh, called for by democratic confederalism? So how are we to react to the problem of being bribed by the framework of a political autonomy, so-called autonomy or independence uh, within the nation-state framework? And what is independence outside the nation-state framework? That was the kind of challenge uh, the presentation was attempting to make. The other thing I think is important in terms of uh, self 
sufficiency is that um, I think the Kurdish people have the, the have the extreme misfortune of be of having their homeland on top of the, in, on top of some of the last easily accessible. Uh, oil reserves in the planet, which uh, capitalism has a toxic addiction to, and that means all of us in our countries and our ways of life. So how can uh, democratic confederalism uh, uh, take on that, that problem, and how is it um, related to its spread uh, to other places in the world? So what are our responsibilities in terms of, of this issue? And finally, um, I think it's also, in terms of self-sufficiency, important that, uh, having mentioned peak oil once again, that any movement, yes, I'm, I'm done, um, any movement that is built around cities alone without considering self-sufficiency, without considering the need to reclaim villages, is, I think, is uh, fated to collapse. So I think that is something we should consider. Thank you. Let me firstly thank the opportunity given to attend this conference and to thank all of you. Uh, my last message or a conclusive message is that when we talk about capitalism, we're talking about a world or international system. The solution to the problem cannot be a regional one. It has to be international and world. No single people on earth can achieve self-sufficiency alone. We all must work together and build global self-sufficiency. Thank you. In January of this year, I looked at the website of the Syriza party in Athens, in Greece. The Syriza, as you know, is the coalition of the radical left. It is the first anti-austerity political party that actually won a democratic election in Europe. On that website, before they swept into power, on that website, the first item was Kobani must win. <laughs> On January 25th, the Syriza party won. In a week, I will be in Greece. And I want to take a message from this important gathering that the Kurds who live in this country and all the Germans who I have met at this Congress and in this city are going to show the solidarity, their solidarity with the Greek people. Do not allow the hungry dogs of the Troika and of Northern Europe to strangle that experiment. You have to show your solidarity to them as they will show their solidarity towards you. Ja, wir sind jetzt am Ende angelangt mit diesem spannenden Panel. Ich möchte euch nochmal bedanken, dass ihr alle daran teilgenommen habt, auch die Zuhörerinnen und insbesondere die Übersetzerinnen. Und ähm, ich möchte noch darauf hinweisen, dass gleich noch ein Soli-Treffen dort oben stattfindet. Dort oben jetzt gleich von allen Vertreterinnen von Soli-Gruppen. Da möchte ich noch in eigener Sache was sagen. Wir haben mit einer Gruppe von Leuten ein Buch über Rojava geschrieben, das gerade neu rausgekommen ist über die Kampagne Tatort Kurdistan. Das gibt es an dem Büchertisch auch. Und äh, ja, dann soll ich noch sagen, dass alle diejenigen, die beim Hostel nicht ausgecheckt haben, jetzt bitte kurz hierher kommen. Und ich soll sagen, es gibt jetzt Essen oben. Und außerdem wünsche ich euch allen weiter viel Erfolg. Berchodan Widerstand heißt Leben. <lacht>